Spider-Man for Insomniac did for Webheads what Batman Arkham Asylum did for Batman, except the save here was probably even more pronounced, as the occasional Batman game wasn't utter trash, where The Amazing Spider-Man 2 by Bebox seemed like the developers had a personal vendetta against anything good. Now, we see the set for the release of Spider-Man onto the PC. Insomniac's title with Nixie's handling the port job... It's coming out soon on Steam. Let's see how it did. Thanks to Sony for the code, and as you guys know, I buy a copy of all the games I review, even if the dev gives me one, so I'll be footing out some hard-earned cash just like you, and I'll give that away to a subscriber, commenter, or somebody on the Patreon. And subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Spider-Man by Insomniac chronicles the journey of our spider hero after the origin story, with him completely invested in the greatest elements of the Spider-Man mythology, such as Peter having no money, delivering pizzas, and everyone consistently exploiting his nearly superhuman innocence. He starts out working with Dr. Octavius, helping on the side while subletting his skills as Spider-Man when he thinks nobody's looking. The game rolls out with a quick series of tutorials that show you just how capable the fighting system is and the storytelling can be by having you face Fisk one-on-one after you pummel the ever-living crap out of well-armed men in a massive corporate building tutorial. But not everything is at its seams, and with just a little bit of time, the game now has you balancing a number of sub-bosses, main bosses, storylines, sub-storylines, activities around the world, and actually trying in all times to reflect what Spider-Man is. And that's a kid just stretched well beyond his capability, but doing the best. He's a superhero. You can wear a Homelander costume on Halloween, but it doesn't make you a supervillain either. And the developers know that and show within the story the juxtaposition of Spider-Man and Peter Parker. That's where Insomniac nestled down to challenge themselves. It's not Batman emo brooding his way through another color-filled cast of weirdos. Spider-Man has those, but you also get that feeling that he's juggling bad guys right after a bad relationship cutscene. Honestly, Peter has so much determination in a tennis game, he'd probably outlive the net. And this is a game that understands that a storyline has to drive the action. Sure, the combat by itself would be great, but the combat and the game and the story is what makes Peter Parker worth playing, incorporating incredible adaptability in NPCs that are unafraid to kill one another with poorly placed machine gun fire. You leap into battles everywhere. Spider-Man is able to dole out weak and heavy attacks and combo them, mixing his spidey skills by sticking enemies to the walls and floors and ceilings and then using spidey sense to dodge between enemies' legs or over their heads if they're outfitted with riot shields or otherwise that would make them impervious to the normal combos without a stunner first. You send enemies flying like dropping a 500-pound weight into a kid's bouncy castle one moment and the next moment you grab them and stick them to a girder and move off stealth-based. The combat is brutal. The Batman games have always had Bruce Wayne pummeling enemies to the point of being in wheelchairs forever, but just slightly leaving them alive enough that he can shrug it off whenever anybody asks him if he's killed anybody. Spider-Man's combat is mixed with Peter Parker's humor throughout to offset that brutality, and it is brutal. Tossing someone into the air 30 feet then use them as a slingshot to take out their best friend is at the very least a bit homicidal. But the one-liners, the quips, and even the way Spider-Man's animated always leaves you looking at the leftovers of a battle thinking, yeah, they're probably good. Once you unlock more than 20 plus suits, many of them having their own special abilities, you can also perform all manner of new stunts, and Spider-Man is consistently able to unlock different skills from a three-tree pattern, adding in new combos, new defenses, and augmenting what he already has. It's just fluid as hell and feels right, even when things go a little bit wrong and you face off against a thuggish larger character and mistime a punch, and he knocks you to the ground. That reflection of the humor and Spider-Man himself makes it feel organic, and Insomniac's timing and work on the fighting system means it is always one of the most satisfying battle systems to date in an action game. That fluidity also continues with the movement throughout the city, which is a staple of Spider-Man. What's there to say? Insomniac's smart handling of the swinging makes it feel great. Connections to buildings, stretching reality just a bit to make it feel like your athleticism is perfect. You can power leap off perches once you buy that skill, incorporate the movement into your battle, and combine a wall run, a wild swing, and a random almost chaotic spiderweb throw to continue continue having you move through the city. As you're doing all these side activities and these different missions, the main missions dole out an excellent story, around 15 plus hours depending on the difficulty. Also, the entire DLC is set in the game, and that's another 8 plus more hours. The side missions feel excellent for the most part. Even collecting backpacks that Peter's left across the city feels a little bit more like you're collecting bits of history, or landing in the street and having someone want to take your picture, or someone else alerting Spider-Man that something needs to be taken care of in the district. The fiction melts into the function and then back again very well.
Also, the boss battles. Well, there's one or two that are a bit humdrum, of course. There's a couple that are straight up better than movie battles. We see a mid-game battle that is, in my opinion, one of the best boss fights in a superhero game. And sliding effortlessly into that and then back into the main gameplay and the narrative is always smooth. Now, speaking of smooth, let's talk about the presentation. Graphically, Spider-Man continues to be a looker. It was a looker on the original PlayStation platform with an insane draw distance, excellent animations, and well-formed ideas of the supervillains, as well as Spider-Man himself, so that everything felt like you were playing a mixture of a comic book and a movie without ever really losing any control. Texture-wise, the game looks great, and the city streets are covered with people milling around, snapping pictures, dancing with company signs outside businesses, walking through parks, and then occasionally interacting with you. The game also has a number of graphical options you can pick, including three types of upscaling, DLSS, FSR 2.0, and Insomniac's own version they used in the game. It also has the ability to turn off and on ray tracing, and the extra high level of ray tracing here is one of the elements that Sony's been quick to point out is above the PlayStation's own version and is pretty exclusive to the PC. Sadly, the game isn't always smooth. Even with DLSS or FSR or otherwise, it's received a number of patches prior to release, and there's one more that's supposed to go live day one. The last patch available made huge strides in smoothing out the FPS and optimizations, but it still could use a little bit more. For example, on the 2080 Ti, 1440p was actually pretty difficult to get a solid 60 FPS. It'd be fine, then would dramatically drop to 45 in a random scene, and sometimes that scene wasn't really any kind of battle going on. That's a true sign of optimization being needed. More options will be available, as I said, day one for this, but the underlying performance isn't exactly where I would like it to be, especially when you're looking at a PC. Lastly, crashes. I did have four crashes. Two of them when switching between ray tracing levels, not by the way when switching to no ray tracing, and another two more in random moments with nothing going on in the game and just crashed the desktop. These were with that newest patch prior to day zero. Also, I just realized that makes four. The fifth one was between a cutscene and going back into the action. However, all things being equal, the animation, the city, the interactions with the pedestrian, amazing bosses, the design, the suits, the detail throughout, it's instantly noticeable in my own experience. I hate crashes though, however, this is on a PC and you of course have Nvidia drivers to contend with. Now let's talk about the presentation for audio because this is one of the best presentations for a game I've seen ever. Something that we saw already in the original PlayStation. For example, the music. Spider-Man's musical score, it's incredible, straight up movie level from when he first swings out of his apartment window to the cascading instruments that fade out and then ramp back up in this later boss battle that could easily be in any movie ever. It's amazing. It's directly inspired by the flicks. He uses awesome orchestral tracks and then they fade into more sedate exploration moments, but they never really let you down anywhere. It is a fantastic score. And so too are the voices, except for the one you probably already know I'm going to mention. I like the voice work overall. Spider-Man and Dr. Octavius in particular have this back and forth and the care there resonates instantly. And it's not over the top. Like there's a time when Peter's worried about some huge effect he may have had that might have affected the doctor's work. And the doctor's awesome response to that, taking that responsibility on himself and shifting any blame from this young kid and what they might actually feel. However, I do want to point out, just like the original game, Mary Jane's writing just feels a bit off. Let's be honest, Mary Jane in the books, the movies, the games, everything, it's sort of polarizing. And I, at least here in the game, find this character just on the cusp of wanting Spider-Man to throw her off a building for a little bit. And in many ways, you could say that just means it's exceptional writing. To hate a character actually can work out. But Mary Jane is so damn back and forth, she probably writes Peter love notes and cut out magazine letters. Even that dislike is really well done. That brings us to the sound, which is the same. It's exceptional. The game's handling of slowly exiting tight confines of some back alley and its bouncy acoustics to the open feeling when you swing out into the air and the entire soundscape just opens around you. It works so well in giving you that feeling of motion and travel. Fight scenes, car crashes, it all works well. You could say that the guns from the enemies sound a bit off, but it's still more on that comic book side versus trying to replicate the movie Heat or anything like that. The big bonus here is that surround is insanely useful for alerting you to enemies nearby, getting ready to attack, or identifying some weird thing that's going on in the city, some activity that you can actually find and track down purely based on the sounds filtering up to you as you stand on a rooftop somewhere. 
in games, that 3D audio is so worthwhile and so helpful, especially when you're an action title like this. And to see it done so well is really a phenomenal moment and something that I really do celebrate the Insomniac developers for getting right and making sure that it made sense and that it gave the gamer that feeling. Speaking of feelings, let's talk about some fun factor. Spider-Man as a video game is awesome from the swinging, the combinations to the combat. And while we have Miles having come out after this, I still feel that this game sort of does more right when it comes to that feeling of fun. It almost feels like Insomniac had three games prior to this one to sort of polish everything. The feeling of shock and dread and menace and cutscenes is there. The interactions with the people on the street to reflect so well that Peter is a kid with responsibilities far beyond what he can take. But you know what? He just keeps on trying. Few games get all this stuff right. Fewer still can keep a game enjoyable during all that because while you have a game that might look great, it can still falter with bad mission structure or poor narrative. I could have dealt with the crimes being more varied in this game, and there's no denying the game does have you collecting, fighting, and figuring out puzzles in an incredible number, and these are, of course, to unlock things, and you could consider some of this pretty close to filler, but then Insomniac did something that I can't really spoil here. Most of you have already played it, but I still don't want to spoil it for people, but some things change, and it had me sitting back thinking, damn, they just did that. Then you get another Spidey suit with another cool ability, leap out into the city and figure out, hey, can I handle these new dangers? A game that makes me want to continue halfway through with a change and then rolls out all the way to the end is a good one and a fun one. And that is what Spider-Man is. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. Putting everything together, the different elements, and keeping it fun throughout is a masterclass work from these guys. You can put a bunch of books in your room. It doesn't mean you're a library. Putting all these things together and continuing that fun factor all the way through makes this well worth getting. I will inform you that there was that price switch for other territories, so make sure you look at the price on Steam. And I would love for this to have been more stable. But when you look at NVIDIA drivers, AMD drivers, and all the work they're trying to do into this game, and additionally, all the options they have in the graphics, not too bad. There's some smoothness issues I definitely want to see get fixed. But overall, it is still that same Spider-Man experience, which does so well. It really is one of those titles that sits with the best of them in that genre. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be doing reviews. You're going to see shorts from me as well. You're going to see previews, continuation of the Walking the Walks. And I want to say thanks to all of you guys who watched those Walking the Walks and found something new and different to talk about when it comes to games, even the games that I didn't love. It's been a fantastic ride in 2022, and I hope it continues to get even better. And I hope you get a game that you enjoy. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your week. The city is in danger. It needs our help. All of our help. All right, well, call the play, coach. Hello, New York! Come through! anymore. You're lucky you found actual cash. I don't know if I can beat him. Maybe you can't. Maybe Spider-Man needs help. Huh. Guess I gotta play harder to get. I don't feel like a failure. I feel like me. Get more backup. And lock down the airspace. You have to learn to swallow that Parker pride and accept that you're human, like the rest of us. Hey, Yuri. I caught the bad guys, but... But what? You might want to bring a ladder. 